G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip we'll be running through the five most common mishaps I see occur in people's systems when they first start out in aquaponics. So the first issue I see people have with their aquaponic systems when they first start out is basically going big too fast. Uh, they decide that they want to grow a ton of fish, so they build a chop and flip style aquaponic system or maybe a three bed IBC based system and they might throw 100 fish into the fish tank in a three bed system or 50 or 60 in a small little chop and flip and things are, you know, travelling along fairly well for the first couple of months and then all of a sudden they start finding dead fish when they come out to feed them in the morning. Now, one of the main reasons this occurs is because the uh, biological surface area or the biofilters created by the grow beds themselves, the media in the grow beds, aren't able to process the amount of waste generated by that amount of fish. Now, for you folks who aren't aware of how the nitrogen cycle works in aquaponics, basically the fish consume food, they excrete ammonia through their gills, that enters the water stream, then the nitrous ammonas in the beds, there are nitrifying bacteria, will oxidize the ammonia into nitrite, and then the nitrobacter will oxidize the nitrite into nitrate, which is a plant available element, and they remove it from the system. So what can happen is if there's too many fish in the system, eating too much food, producing too much ammonia, it can basically overwhelm the system, the bacteria colonies start to crash, uh, nitrites released into the uh, water, which is very toxic to the fish, and so is ammonia, and you start to find that, yeah, one or two fish here and there start knocking off, and in some cases I've seen, you know, half a tank full of fish die in 24 hours, and then it's just a cascading effect from there, you lose everything and have to start again. So what I would suggest if you're running a media bed system like this one behind me here, is that you only allow one fish that you want to grow out to 500 grams or what, roughly a pound in weight per 25 litre or 6.6 .6 gallons of the clay media or suitable rock based media. The reason being is that volume of media has enough biological surface area to house enough bacteria to process the waste from that size fish. So it's just a very basic rule of thumb for you folks starting out. Uh, later on, you can tweak that here and there with adding different biological filters and, and bits and pieces. But yeah, when you're first starting out, I would recommend one fish per 25 litres or 6.6 .6 gallons worth of media in the grow beds. Just before we move on, I just wanted to let you folks who are new to the channel know that I've got a number of helpful DIY clips as well as um, some that explain different aspects of aquaponics, design and that sort of thing. And I've compiled them into a playlist which I'll link up here uh, at the end of the clip and also down in the description below if you wanted to suss that out. Um, and it also too, if you want to catch the future aquaponic clips that will be coming to the channel, all you need to do is press on the subscribe button down there, then smash the bell icon once it appears, and you'll be sent notifications to your inbox as soon as I upload the clips to the YouTube channel. Now, the second most common mistake I see people do when they start off a larger system like this one here is that they do not include any solids removal. Uh, when we're talking solids, we're talking about solids created by the fish. Uh, basically, they excrete it in the fish tank, and then normally, if you don't have a filter, it gets brought out into the grow beds here. And what can happen is, over time, it can build up to the point where it creates anoxic or anaerobic zones. So the bacteria in these anaerobic zones still need their oxygen, so they'll start to rob it from the nitrate, which will revert it back to nitrite, and you could start losing some fish due to nitrite poisoning or brown blood disease. And you'll probably also notice that the pH will start to move upwards. So that's a bit of a telltale sign if there is a bit of an issue occurring. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I suggest everyone grab an API test kit or some other form of freshwater test kit the test for not only pH, but also nitrite, nitrate, and the ammonia. Um, so you can test it fairly regularly just to see where the levels are at. And yeah, if there is an issue, you may pick it up through that testing regime. Now, the good news is that it's pretty easy to remove the bulk of the solids from making it to the bed themselves. Um, you can use things like the little radial flow filter or a canister filter. Um, I've actually got ex explanations for them in a little clip up there if you want to suss it out. Um, they're just a great handy little DIY job made out of some drums that collects the solids so you can remove them and use them on your veggie patch, on your fr fruit trees, whatever. Or you could uh, possibly add them into a mineralization tank 
process the solids even further, mineralize them down, and then you can decant the clean water from there back into your system. Now, some self-appointed gurus will claim that removing the solids from the system will starve the plants for nutrients. Uh, that's not the case. As I mentioned before, the bulk of the ammonia is excreted through the gills of the fish, so suspended in the water. And I'll link to a paper down in the description below that runs through the other elements that you will find suspended in the water column and not necessarily in the solids released by the fish. Um, so check that out if you're interested. And the bottom line is, as long as the fish are well fed, there will be more than enough nutrients floating around in the system to grow you some very healthy plants. So the third most common mistake I see people make uh, when they're setting up an aquaponic system is incorrect media selection for the grow beds. Uh, what they do is they go down and grab a, a nice cheap rock, bring it home, pop it in the grow beds, toss some fish in the system after it's been cycled, and then after a couple of months, they notice that the pH starts to rise. Now, nine times out of 10, what has happened is they've selected a rock that has carbonate-based rock within the blend. In the nitrification process, uh, as the ammonia is transferred all the way through into nitrate, uh, you end up with acid being released into the system, and the pH in a well-matured aquaponic system will tend to always fall. So as this acid is released into the water, it's acting on the carbonate-based rocks, releasing um, carbon dioxide and also releasing alkalinity into the water, which will raise the pH eventually to the point where, you know, maybe some plants don't do so well because most plants like to grow in a, in a pH of around about from six to about oh, seven. This is one issue that I have seen crop up a lot. And unfortunately about the only fix you can do is to uh, empty out your grow beds and start again. Uh, maybe rotate them out one at a time. So there's a very easy test you can take along to the landscape suppliers uh, to see if the rock that you want to use has carbonates in it. All you need is a clear container, a glass jar or plastic jar and some white household vinegar. Now white household vinegar has a pH of around about four from memory. Uh, so all you need to do is pour a little bit of that over the media that you'd like to use in your system. And if you start to see little um, bubbles, streams of bubble rise after about 30 seconds to a minute, you know that there's carbonates in that rock and yeah, pretty much will discard it. Don't bother selecting that for your grow beds. And just a heads up, I've tried this little test at a couple of landscape suppliers. They may look at you a little bit weird, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry and um, bring home, you know, a couple of trailer loads worth of rock that's going to be useless down the road. Now, the fourth mistake that we'll talk about, I've seen occur a bit and it's actually happened to myself, and that is not securing your hose work and your pipe work correctly. Uh, what that means is any line coming from the pump out to either a fish tank, a filter or a grow bed needs to be secured by a ring clamp or have the pipes glued securely into any fittings. With the hose work coming from the pump, I like to have a hose clamp on every single fitting to make sure that the hose will not blow off the barb fittings that I have them connected to all the way up to the valve that is the inlet to the grow beds themselves. I don't worry about adding the clamps to the hose work after the valve leading into the grow beds because all the pressure is confined to before the valve and it's only a trickle coming out into the bed itself. If you don't secure these fittings from the pump, you, what can happen is over time, a little bit of movement of the hose or the pipe can work the uh, pipe or hose loose from the fitting and you can pump your fish tank or the sump tank dry depending on how you've got the system set up and potentially could lose all your fish. Now I've had a bit of a catastrophe here. Uh, what happened was a fitting coming from the drain line from the fish tank was dislodged by our dog when we first got her. She tripped over the drain line and yeah, knocked it off its little stand. And I lost all the water pretty much well from the sump tank. Luckily, I didn't lose the water from the fish tank because we use a solids lifting outlet and that allowed the fish tank to stay full. And there was also air in there, so the fish survived. Now it was my own fault that this occurred because I never connected the pipe to the fitting correctly because I was always intending to um, rework the system but just never got around to it. So while I did have some Teflon tape um, around the fitting to create a watertight seal, I should have braced underneath it which is something we did later on and also I should have run some 316 stainless steel screws through the fitting into the pipework to make sure it was secure. It's something I've done in other positions on the same build. In fact the pipe leading out of the fish tank has that exact arrangement, some Teflon tape with 316 stainless steel screws through the fitting to keep the pipe in place. So I learned a very important lesson that day and I made sure that everything else 
on the drain side of things was either glued together or had the Teflon wrap with a 316 stainless steel screw through there to hold it in place. Now the number one catastrophic mistake I see people make with their backyard aquaponic system is not including some sort of backup system. So the fish tank can receive oxygen in case of a pump failure or a blackout. Now, there's some very basic ones on the market that you can buy from different aquaponic shops, or you can make a little DIY jobby um, like the one that I did for our system here. Now, just a word of warning though, um, not only do you need one, as I mentioned, for a blackout, but also for a pump failure in some situations. Now, pretty obviously, if there's a blackout, a little relay switch will switch in the little backup system, throw on a DC air pump that is connected to a battery, and it will provide oxygen via some stones in the fish tank itself, and the fish should be um, fairly happy for a number of hours. Now, the problem arises if you're like many people who've decided to run a Venturi-only system. Um, if your pump burns out, uh, there's still power going through the relay in a little backup system, and yeah, basically, you're going to have no oxygen provided to the fish in your fish tank. Now, in a situation like that, if you are running just a venturi to oxygenate the water, or maybe just splashing water over the top of your fish tank to agitate the surface to provide oxygen, you really need to invest in a little flow switch, something that will show that there's no water flowing into the tank if the pump fails, so it can switch on the backup system and oxygenate the water for your fish. Obviously, the same thing would happen in a black out with a um, little float switch um, the water level would drop because the pump's not working it would kick on the backup air supply and the fish would be happy until you could rectify the issue or the power comes back on that mishap or mistake would have to be the most catastrophic of all of them in my book um, you know the last thing you want to do is grow a fish to full size and then walk out the back in the afternoon to feed them and find them all belly up in the tank so please go out and buy a backup air system if you are going to start an aquaponic system. So I'd suggest that you buy it even before you put water in the fish tank. So that way, it's the first time you fill up the fish tank, you can have a couple of dummy runs, make sure everything's working properly. So you've got a bit of peace of mind as soon as the fish go in the system. So there's my top five mistakes that I see um, frequently uh, pop up on different forums and social media pages and groups. Um, let me know in the comment section below if you have a, um, another common mistake that you see people make all the time and we might think about including it in a future video uh, also too uh, for you folks who haven't subscribed as i mentioned before all you need to do is hit that little subscribe button and then hit the bell icon once it appears and you'll be sent notifications whenever i upload future content on aquaponics to the channel here uh, before i go i would like to thank you all for coming along and liking the videos and sharing them around with your family and friends i just need to send out a special thanks to all those folks who are supporting us on on the YouTube membership program and also over on our own membership website, Farm Your Own Yard. Thank you very much for all the support, folks. You can actually find a list of super contributors down in the description below. It'd be fantastic, as always, if you could go down, click on a link or two and see what those folks are all about and show them some love. I'd really appreciate it. So once more, I do hope that you have found this video to be useful and your own aquaponics and gardens are booming. And I will catch you all next clip. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.